the Boston Celtics, my rival Boston Celtics, making a splash in acquiring Kristaps Porzingis and the draft rights to Marcus Sasser uh, in the Warriors' 2024 first-round pick, top four protected. The Grizzlies acquiring Marcus Smart and the Washington Wizards acquiring Tyus Jones, Danilo Gallinari, Mike Muscala, and the draft <laughs> rights to Julian Phillips. I uh, I got a lot. I was going back from the Yankee you know, on the stream when this trade broke the first time. Because then obviously there was the, it fell apart. Then I thought Boston was moving on from Porzingis. A couple hours later, like right before midnight or right after midnight, Eastern Standard Time, the trade broke. And I was just like, wow. Like the Celtics got Porzingis, which I think can be great for him. Even despite the injury concerns that he has. Um... I didn't love that Al Horford was playing uh, pretty much at the five throughout the playoffs. Should have been Robert Williams, who they didn't use at all for some reason or that much. So I think Celtics he was injury prone in. too. He was injury prone. He had like some sort of like nagging injury, so they were like giving yeah, him and then he was sick too. Yeah. So. so then the Celtics get a little bigger in size, which I love for them. Uh, unfortunately, I, I wish I couldn't compliment Boston, but but then they kind of. Uh, that's so I was like, okay, what did they give up? Because this was like the second time the trade happened. And I see Marcus Smart in the deal, and I'm just like, wow. Like yeah. Marcus Smart was even betrayed. Like felt like betrayed. Like he thought he was going to retire at Boston. Now he's heading to Memphis. I mean, a nice little solid duo with Marcus Smart and John Morant, assuming they're John Morant plays. Like because he's going to get suspended, but um, twenty five games. So yeah, twenty five games, but. To get Marcus Smart, and to make him, Memphis is going to be a really good defensive team next year. Uh, with Dylan Brooks, Jim he's still there, Desmond Dane, Stephen Adams, healthy, uh, Aaron dude, Jackson D- Jr. Dylan Brooks is gone. Oh, I know. <laughs> and Marcus Smart is, is on the team. Dylan Brooks is, is taking a train to Shanghai. Uh, or, or the yeah, Rockets, but, actually. The Rockets might actually sign him, which is funny to me. But Yeah, but um, so I was just very shocked by that trade. I mean... Boston has, like, a plethora of guards. So, like, I don't think... From in terms of, like, depth chart and offense perspective, they still got guys like Malcolm Brogdon, Peyton Pritchard, who are, like, literally the fourth option. So they still have Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, but... Should they re-sign Grant Williams? Uh, I think they should. I mean, because Grant Williams wasn't even supposed to have that big of a role because Daniel Gallinari was supposed to be there. And, and he's lost he really was, well. He did really, really well uh, in in replace of Gallinari, who was supposed to be that that sort of um, you know glorified role player that he is. Yeah, Grant Williams did well, and then obviously they had the injury concerns with Porzingis and uh, and Rob and Robert Williams, so they're definitely gonna have to be there. Al Horford, especially up there in age, but in addition to Marcus Smart being involved in that deal, the other interesting pick is the Wizards getting Tyus Jones. I mean, I said it earlier. <laughs> He's probably the best backup point guard in the NBA, but now he's going to be starting, so I'm kind of I'm looking forward to seeing his stats go up. Um, now he's going to be a starter, and even though Washington is going to be awful, like I'm talking about like probably the worst team in basketball, awful. I'm honestly I'm kind of interested to see the one-two duo of Tyus Jones and Jordan Poole. I think they can both complement each other. Uh, hopefully, Danilo Gallinari is healthy. Uh, for the Wizards, but it was a very interesting trade, to say the least. There was a small part of me that was hoping Porzingis would come back to the Knicks, but Boston got him. Very interesting. Uh, But I don't know why, Jeremy, but this trade, something about it, I think Marcus Smart is going to be playing even better because he's going to feel betrayed and jealous and stuff. And I don't know why. I couldn't tell you. But I just feel like that Celtics roster is too much of a fever dream. And that they're just going to choke again and lose to the Heat three years in a row. I was going to ask you that. I was going to ask, do you think the, the, the Celtics are going to make their way to the finals with this uh, with this this roster? Stephen A. Smith believes so. Uh, for they sh- I mean, Stephen L. Smith with how many awful takes he has. But, <laughs> I mean, they should. Like, like, you have Porzingis, Tatum, Brown, Brogdon, Derek White, who I forgot to mention earlier. Like, this is a team you try to put together in 2K. Like, it's, it's an amazing team, but for some reason, they just can't get it done. And, like, there's been moments of Jason Tatum not living up in the big moments. There's been Jalen Brown in Game 7 forgetting how to handle a basketball. 
and there was talks about him leaving. Uh, Injuries, they're they're getting older. Um, Yeah. Is, um... Uh... So, like, I just think that... um, Oh, is Joe Missoula the guy? Like, I know it was his first year, and he was kind of thrown into the wolves, but some overly championship-eager, stubborn Celtics fans were already calling for... Missoula's head. So that I think was an overreaction, but they're having that thought because they're desperate for a championship and they know their championship window. But I don't know. I mean, on paper they should win they should win. I'd say them or Denver has probably the best roster in basketball. But for some reason they just can't get it done, whether it's losing to the Heat or uh they couldn't beat Golden State. So they should win the championship. But I mean, it's not I, I I don't know. I, I think for my take here, I think they just screwed the screwed the pooch in the championship uh, uh, aspirations. I really do think so. Um, Chris Porzingis had a stat padding year on the Wizards. He was really good. Now numbers wise, played about sixty five games, which is really good for giving his giving his injury uh, profile. Um, but he was on a team that really had no aspirations at all, so he was just playing good enough to see if he could get traded maybe during the season, but he got traded in the off season, um, along with Beal to the Suns, which I also think is just an overshot for the, for Phoenix. But the Celtics, they give up. They're the former defensive player of the year in Marcus Smart. The heart and soul of the team that has been to multiple conference finals and NBA finals. They've been playoff contenders. One of the teams expected to make the finals and win for the last Four seasons, dating back to 2018, when Jason Tatum was a rookie. They're going to have to pay Jalen Brown just about the same amount of money that they have paid for Jason Tatum. That payroll is going to skyrocket. And along with Chris Epps Porzingis, that too. With Chris Epps, he's going to have to play a lot harder and a lot more uh, agile than he has ever played because this is his first time on a championship contender in his career. I wouldn't say Dallas because Dallas really didn't, didn't play well with him. They played actually well without him. That's why he got traded. But with yeah. the Knicks, with Washington's maybe first round exit, with Dallas playing well without him and making the, the conference finals with Luka and supporting cast, this is the toughest upcoming season for the Unicorn, without a doubt. And Oh, I agree. I mean, you saw the salaries there. I mean, uh, Jalen Brown, 28.5. Brogdon, 22.5. Derek White, 17.6. Robert Williams, 11.6. A word for ten million, and then they got Tatum. Porzingis thirty-six million. Thirty-six million. Tatum thirty-two point six million. Honestly, that's a good point about Porzingis. Um, he for sure, this is the most pressure on him, especially with his injury history and championship aspirations. I mean, Porzingis is still gonna have to put on weight, uh, in terms of muscle to really be healthy and be this anchor because they made this trade to rely on him. I mean. Their starting lineup, I'd imagine they would stay. They would go Derek White moving to the starting point guard, Brown at the two, Tatum at the three, Porzingis at the four, and then they should put Rob Rob Williams at the five. They should. Uh, they, I, apparently, I, they're I, saying. I, I, I think this is Bleacher Report. They're I, saying start uh, start Brogdon and White. Uh, I don't I mean, think you should start Brogdon. I, I like that option that he had on the bench coming off yeah, the bench. Yeah, I mean, there. he won the fraudulent six man of the year award. And I don't think it's <laughs> fraudulent because it should have went to Emmanuel quickly. I mean, the Grizzlies know something. They didn't – because Brogdon was supposed to be a part of that deal instead of Marcus Smart. And he was like, no. He was actually was going to the Clippers, wasn't he? Oh, yeah, he was going to the Clippers. And the but Clippers saw his Clippers. injury history and it was like, no, we're not going to do this trade. We're backing out. Yeah, we've this was already, originally. We already had injury history. Look at our, look at the Clippers roster in the past year. Yeah, we're not going to. I don't want to deal with a third injured person along with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. So, like, that's why the Clippers backed out. You, you can clearly see because Brogdon tore his his ligament in his arm, right, in the playoffs. Yeah, and also, um, Brogdon was the first six man of the year at winner to play less than seventy five games. So that's another reason why I think it should have went too quickly. But, like, obviously that injury history, that's why the Clippers backed out of the trade and they had to get a different team in, which was the, the Wizards. The Wizards were actually in the trade already. Or, sorry. It was, the, just, the, they, it was just a, a two-team deal. Uh, yeah, yeah, Not yeah, a three-team yeah. deal. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was a right forearm injury that he, that he, that he tore a ligament. 
So um, will he have to re recover without having surgery, or will he have to have surgery? Who knows? I think he's perfect as the, the sixth man uh, for, for the point guard position. I think they should slide Robert Williams in the as a center position. I think that would create a lot more spacing for Porzingis to kind of be like a, a pop, a, a pick and pop shooter, as well as uh, him get giving or him getting defensive help from Rob Williams. Because Porzingis, he can block shots. Don't get me wrong, he can. I just don't think he has good enough defense like they had with Marcus Smart. Well, I just uh, think I, it's because he's not big enough to play the five for that reason. I think that's why he yeah. should be the four. Have Robert Williams yeah. at the five. Um, yeah. But honestly, though, one thing I'll positively say about this trade for the Celtics is Porzingis as a third option is scary. Like, if, he, you, if he's healthy, if he's healthy, how? Yeah, if he's healthy, that's a huge like knock. But um, or, like, how do you yeah. even game plan for that? It's like, do you try to like just let Tatum and Brown do their thing and prevent anybody else? Like, Porzingis can easily hurt you for like twenty five a night. Yeah, no, he, he definitely can, uh, especially if, if he's healthy. But Marcus Smart hasn't really had any sort of significant injury in his career. Yeah, he he's missed and he's games. the defensive anchor. He's like, yeah, he's kind of like the Draymond of the Celtics. He's another. So where do you? In the locker room but too. besides Rob Williams, where do you find the defense? Uh, currently, with that roster that Najah showed, they don't. I mean, they don't really like, have anybody Derek to sign White's besides. a good defender, yeah. but he's not an elite defender like Marcus Smart. The Celtics need an elite defender. They want to win. Like they can have all these cute, amazing offensive players, but if they don't have another defensive anchor to pair with Rob Williams, their uh, the championship window isn't um, it isn't as big as it seems. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why we'll switch to the Grizzlies and why I believe the Grizzlies are your 2024 NBA champions. Here's why. Here is why they are your 2024 NBA champions. They have, when John Morant gets back, they have the most complete starting lineup next to the Denver Nuggets. If, if the Nuggets actually sign, re-sign Bruce Brown, which I don't think they will, because Bruce Brown, without them, the, their defense will falter. Which I think... A lot of teams will, will definitely throw money at Bruce Brown. With the, the, the Grizzlies, you've got John Morant, Marcus Smart, Desmond Bain, Jaron Jackson Jr., who's also Defensive Player of the Year last year, and then Steven Adams. The only thing that really occurs to me that needs to happen for the Grizzlies, John Morant's got to have a good track record off the court. Steven Adams needs to stay healthy. And there you go. You got a solid starting lineup. The only thing that they really need, though, is a backup point guard. That's that's what they have to search for. And also, is Brandon Clark going to be available, just as good as he was last year before tearing his Achilles? That's those are your two questions. Two questions that the Grizzlies need to answer in the offseason. But this is a great trade for the Memphis Grizzlies. That's I it. mean. <laughs> Jeremy, are you a little biased there? Are the Grizzlies like your secret second favorite team? You had them winning the finals this year. You have them winning the finals next year. I mean... I didn't know about the John Moran off the court issues. I didn't know about that, okay? Listen, you... I mean, I think <laughs> it's a respectable take. Like, I see your opinions, but I think just what you're asking is too tough of a too tough of an ask. I mean, John Morant, I mean... Wrote his, we established this throughout the pod. His, his apology wasn't insincere. He wrote on ChatGBT. He beat up a 17-year-old. <laughs> he flashes guns like it's a Nerf gun, like he's this cool dude. Um, Did you hear what I just said? If everything goes right, if, if Morant's off-the-court issues stay in the back burner, if they don't make another appearance, the Grizzlies are... NBA Finals champions. Yeah, but even if, I no, I, I heard that. It's just like a big if. Like unfortunately Steven yeah. Adams has dealt with he's been played with injuries throughout his career too. And I mean, um uh I don't even like at best I'd have the Grizzlies fourth in the West. At best. I don't know. I don't think so. I would ha I would take You got Marcus like, Smart, man. Who's, they, who's that's true. Look, they're they're gonna struggle a little bit. Marcus Smart's gonna lead the way. Um, in the backcourt, along with Desmond Bain. They're going to struggle a little bit, but when uh, Morant gets back, come, uh, was it, like, New Year's? January? They're going to uh, come back. 
or December? November, December. Around the time, around Christmas time, when Rand gets back, the Grizzlies are gonna be gunning for the first seed. Yeah, Actually, still... you know what? I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say they take the third seed. That's, That's what I'll say. Third seed. Nuggets. Well, I just think first seed because I would still take Denver over them. Um, I think that the they didn't play Denver in the playoffs. Yeah, I think the Suns are going to improve their bench, and they're going to be right there. I think they're a championship to our team. And if the Warriors bring Draymond back, I would also take them over the Grizzlies. Because my thing, too, is when Ja comes back, yeah, that starting lineup on paper is very good. But what are you going to do? Are you going to have Desmond Bain be an undersized three? Is there – I mean, I like Luke Kennard and a healthy Brandon Clark with their bench – other than that, there's not really many game changers. I mean, I think the Grizzlies can be a second round team, conference final team. Obviously, a huge improvement for them, but I still, I, I just don't know. I think they're kind of, I think they're in the same boat as the Kings, kind of. The Kings, you can even make the case could be ahead of the Grizzlies. I mean, it's just like they got this new team, uh, and whatever. How is Marcus Smart and Ja? Are they even going to click and play together? Um, so, I don't know. I just think there's a lot of what ifs. I think I need to see how the season goes um, and how they how this new team gels together before I put any label on them winning the championship. I, I just really see it in them. I do. I, I like Marcus Smart's play. He's going to have more of of uh, intensity with the team. Um, as as soon as Morant left or had had issues off the court, uh, and then you had Dylan Brooks just be a complete idiot. Um, I think that that'll really change the culture of Memphis with Smart on the team. And as you mentioned before, he's going to have a chip on his shoulder because he thought he was going to retire as a Celtic, and now he's not. So with that in mind, you have also again. Jaron Jackson Jr., two defensive players of the year. Like, you can't, you can't beat that. I see. Yeah, but I'm still good. very wary of John Moran. Just like his his off court stuff. <clears throat> I'm okay. not gonna lie well, to you; it's bad. Like, I I think 25 games should have been higher. Well, maybe that this is the reason why he got, uh, you know, uh, he, he got a, a second wind. A lot of, I know, a lot of our writers in BSP said 41 games, half the season. So some media analysts said, yeah, he should get uh, a 41-game suspension. But due to this happening, Marcus Smart getting traded over, they have they have a second win towards him. And I think that that will really give them a boost uh, towards becoming the best in the West next year well another thing too is that i want to know is is john Morant going to come back like what's the vibe going to be look like like are they still going to respect him still kind of view him as like a captain type uh because of his personality issues and stuff like that but one thing i will say though and why i love marcus smart from the grizzlies is because yes dylan brooks is gone just because he became too much of a a villain where his game wasn't doing the talking but Marcus Smart still has that tough guy swagger and knows how to do it right to his advantage and getting ahead of other teams. And honestly, with the type of players and the way Memphis plays, they still need that. So, yes, Dylan Brooks is obviously gone, and he's whatever. But I think they still needed that type of swagger, and I think Marcus Smart is perfect for that reason. 